students and communists back in the late 70s. They're still, they didn't know they brought them to justice. So the group mapped out where all, where all of them live, and they put these maps all over the city. So to this point, like, they're, you're, you're, you're living next to a person who committed genocide. Um, so this is back in 2000, early 2000s when they were doing this. Um, so th these first few things aren't going to relate directly to what we're talking about. It's just to, to think through different ways we target and shame people. Um, so another other things were uh, this one on the left was about uh, budget cuts, austerity measures, the creative way of people using weather balloons. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Uh, people using weather balloons to, to you know, yeah. to put big banners in the air, and there's giant banner drops. There's ways the culture use it for projections and, and even like stick on blurbs uh, to, to name who the Koch brothers are. They're really like super right wing uh, funders. Um, and then there's different ways to use billboard, billboard liberation, where you can alter billboards. Um, and I love showing this one just to show that you can be militant and funny. This is one of my favorite actions ever. ever and 1996, the Reclaim the Streets movement in uh, Britain. So they had this stilt walking dame, and it was really loud, a big street party, um, and it was an it was anti road movement. They, they wanted to keep, maintain their public space instead of more roads. So there's a line of cops in front, and there's music, it sounds like a party, but there's somebody under that dress that, with a jackhammer that's drilling up the street. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as the march proceeds, they leave a, a tree. Um, so that moment was really beautiful and actually led to um, dock workers and all sorts of other people getting involved because the, the, act, the action itself was like beautiful and became its, its own mythology. Um, so uh, I'm going to skip. Um, well, uh, so depending on your target and your messaging, uh, you have to think through what are the symbols, what are the visual symbols that um, and for you it's relating to mental health or conservatorship or whatnot. Um, for this one, for example, it's Jeb Bush, terrible, Fox News, um, media mogul. Uh, he was trying to privatize education. Um, and this is uh, back when Occupy Wall Street was happening. Um, and so uh, we were thinking through symbols of education, Sesame Street, and so we, um, we went and interrupted his long <laughs> speech dressed as with Muppet, that Muppet heads stashed in our backpacks, and we fell into bed and snuck in and disrupted them the whole way through. So, you know, just thinking through some, nice. some there's some ways that you can talk about something very serious, yes. um, but still have it be funny and point to the horrors that these right. people are doing. Um, That's a good way. In the, in about uh, 20, the end of 2013, um, from 2011 to 2013, we really noticed the impact of the second tech boom um, and, and displacements happening from it. And um, there was a law that the Google buses, the big giant tech buses, were breaking that uh, using our public infrastructure. Um, so we uncovered that law and <coughs> did a big action. Um, with this, I wrote this fake ordinance that basically said this is the, the city should be enforcing these laws already. Um, it's a two-tier system, there's the haves and the have-nots. Yeah. And then we pretended to be the fake city agency that was, oh. was gonna um, you know, finally just enforce the laws and not let tech get away with using all of our infrastructure. Right. Um, so in this case, it was like, it was it's what's called prefiguring. You think about what the city should do and you, let people, you let people imagine that the city might be just, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so this one, we use a city uh, kind of like typical road sign, aesthetics, and um, messaging, and had calculated that um, if we fined them for every time they stopped, it would actually be a billion dollars in collective fines over right. a two-year period. So we were demanding that they pay the billion dollars, and then we have eviction defense and, and um, affordable housing and, and whatnot. Um, I'm going to skip through. We kept doing it. It got a little more ridiculous. You know. <laughs> we brought in a, a big surveillance uh, stilt walking <laughs> robot um, to connect all the ways that tech is impacting the city. Um, and then most recently, uh, with the sign that like yeah. our politicians let the, the most 
the richest people uh, in our area, like the richest people on earth are these techie billionaires, right? Um, take over our city, and the biggest sign of it this year were the scooters. Oh, yeah. If you remember the tech scooters that were dropped yeah. by tens of thousands of them dropped on our I street. Mean, Nobody asked permission. Um, <laughs> uh, senior disability, y'all y'all were very upset, right? They were blocking the sidewalk. Right. People in wheelchairs couldn't get They're around. Laying them it was just, it just <laughs> sunk a complete <laughs> entitled <laughs> trash. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, Working with uh, Coalition on Homelessness, we talked through this action. Nobody took credit for it because, you know, like some of us are with nonprofits and can't say we do these things, but, <laughs> um, you know, they, what they did was the same thing as the Google Ventures. Like they were doing this stuff that was illegal, and people were just letting them get away with it, so we collected, yeah? One of the things about scooters that made me pissed off was when the city finally did start finding these people, See the shining on because they were making more money renting the scooters. They could get fined thousands of times. Yeah. Thank you. You know, didn't matter. They were making a million that day. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So, so we we wanted to show the public that the level of entitlement that they let these people get away with compared to folks that don't have anything, any housing. So at the same time, they're letting tech folks put their toys, toys all over the sidewalks, they're stealing homeless people's belongings, survival gear, and throwing it in the trash. Mm -hmm. So this action was um, to draw attention to that discrepancy. Um, so we gathered a bunch in the morning, piled it in, in front of the Google buses, um, had some smoke flares for, for appeal, you know, for... Who you guys been all my life? <laughs> ah, yeah. Definitely me. And, um, you know, we were tying it... Ooh. Uh, through some of the simple, simplified messaging, just making that connection, which is, you know, to some people it's, it seems really complicated. Like, what do the scooters have to do with homeless people? And we're like, well, <laughs> the city lets them do whatever, you know? Um, and so this, we had the whole intersection, and uh, what you won't see here is that um, homeless folks, folks who had been evicted, folks who live in the mission for, you know, their families have lived there for generations, uh, Leroy, Tiny, all the, the, the people school, not the people school, decolonized academy folks were out um, speaking truth to power and talking about not taking this anymore. Um, <clears throat> there they are. Yeah. And it was really beautiful, you know? It, it, we held it for about an hour and a half. Um, and uh, they made them, they were, they, Took them off the street for a while. Seems like there's a pilot program now, but we did make our point. We're not winning the war, but it's a little chip in like people's consciousness, you know. Um, <clears throat> the Apple employee said, "I think this is a poignant visual representation of the state of things. That se this seems extremely necessary in making me think of my job in a way that I wouldn't have before." So you see the like mental shift in some of the tech workers being like, "Actually, they're right." <laughs> Um, and this is back when we were, it was Prop F, not the most recent one, but the one where we were trying to regulate Airbnb, um, 2015. Uh, I think I can show you a little bit. You won't hear the sound, really. But they put these billboards all over town congratulating themselves for the taxes they had paid, um, finally, after dodging them forever. And so we wanted to, to, to tie, they spent more money than anyone in history fighting regulation, $9 million, um, wow. just to keep, uh, how much time do I have? This was the Airbnb one, right? Yeah. How much time do I have? Um, do you know how much more time? Uh, an hour and 20 minutes. <clears throat> no, no, on her section. On my oh, section. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. You're good. You're good. Okay. We went in as a fake event planning company with, with pizzas, and we said we were hired to do an event in that space. And we got past security. <laughs> so the pizzas and the balloons are disarming, right? They don't they don't make people think of a protest, right? And the security guards just watched. <laughs> 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 what the so we were playing on we were playing on their ad campaign that said do this with your new tax dollars. Love Airbnb. They put that all over town. Right. 
So we were saying evictions, love, Airbnb, homeless, and love, Airbnb. Wow. Because they were, they were trying to, uh, basically Airbnb, people were evicting whole buildings to run tourist hotels. <laughs> There was somebody there uh, that was living on the streets that talked about, you know, I've seen all these condos going up, all these Airbnbs, and why aren't you building housing for homeless people? You know, the rich are playing the streets. <clears throat> and so other stuff, you know, is more simple. These uh, Veritas tenants are, are fighting the biggest landlord in the city, so we made him, he was getting an award called the City of, of Hope Award. And so um, we organized to disrupt the, uh, the entrance of the award ceremony and made him this trophy. Um, instead of the spirit of hope, it's the spirit of greed. And the tenants, uh, we, we rewrote the song to Killing Me Softly. It's Killing Our Souls with Addiction. Um, Ruining my life with a rent. Killing me with a So they sang that. They sang that and delivered this um, trophy and, and the wreaths. Uh, uh, some of them actually quite sad um, about folks who died from the harassment in their building. Um, but you know, brought brought more press and news to like the fact that this this is a pattern all over the city. Um, and th these are some of the white coats, some of the doctors who came to talk about the health hazards of eviction. Um, and this next. One is uh, what I'm going to kind of close with before we open it up for discussion. Um, so um, many of y'all know Bilal, right? Uh, what used to be with Coalition of Homelessness, now it's with uh, Poor Mag and East Bay, sadly. Um, <coughs> but we were uh, helping register homeless folks to vote during this time and trying to let them know about these terrible um, Anti-homeless laws, Prop Q, uh, is one of the biggest ones that um, was, was about increasing criminalization and um, sweeping tents. Um, and we wanted to uh, let folks know what was going to happen and what's already happening. Um, they're supposed to give people notice of, of shelters. They're not supposed to sweep unless they're shelters. It's already terrible legislation, and they're not even following, as we see now, they're not even following their own terrible policies. Um, <clears throat> So we organized an, uh, uh, folks to meet up at 24th Street and, and had it be like the public part of the action that was just going to be a march while people were at 22nd and Mission, a few blocks away, breaking into that empty uh, lot where it used to be affordable housing. <coughs> um, and we strung that clothesline of uh, 60 white outfits to represent the folks who've been burned out of that who never got rehoused. Never got rehoused. Oh. And it's going to be luxury condos. And then here we were projecting above onto the luxury condos called Vida next door, um, appropriating uh, Latino culture and mission. Um, and in the street, we, we put out a whole studio apartment um, of 
white furniture and folks were kind of doing domestic ritual and Tony helped organize speakers and folks to read poetry, youth reading poetry to talk about gentrification. Um, it's all awesome stuff. Um, and so you can see it was kind of a festival. Uh, there's a lot of things happening and, and we held the street and so uh, so you can see some of the projections here with the stories. We held the street for a long time and around the fence there was, um, we made a makeshift gallery. Uh, you can see, and, and uh, I had worked with, uh, I put a call out to the homeless and the housing groups to talk to their folks and ask if we could use their stories and their photographs um, for this campaign. So all along this fence was um, folks who were facing displacement um, telling their stories and saying, please, you know, they'll, they'll see you Q&I. Um, <coughs> Irish Canada, we love, we always love their home. And uh, didn't survive trying to fight for eviction. Um, and this is just to show it stayed up for three days. People, people really did stop and read the stories. Um, <coughs> People broke some of the, the, the glasses, and then you can see that somebody else came and hung the pictures back up. So there was this real like engagement with the stories. Um, and then, lastly, I forgot about this one. Um, Y'all remember Prop C, oh, yeah. right? Um, well, a bunch of tech companies were against it, and uh, that are run by heavy billionaires. And so, um, yeah. We were playing with how do we call out the techie billionaires that own more than all of us uh, and half the world combined, really. Uh, and so the guy who owns Twitter also owns what's called Square. So we were playing with their icons and emojis because, you know, they run all the <coughs> social media apps. <coughs> and then uh, wow. London was, of course, against Prop C and we had to, this was a, a collage that was calling out people for the action, and then we made it real by quickly ordering some poop emojis on <laughs> And, um, oh, please count. Yeah, it was fun. So you can have fun and, and still, you know, do uh, some, some serious action, some serious shit, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. So I'm going to stop there, and maybe we can... What sparked for you some ideas uh, that we can turn the lights on? Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, so based on some of this stuff and and what it might be turning in your brain, did it make you think through anything that you can do with this kind of this implementation of conservatorship? Just whatever's like coming to your mind. You just start a brainstorm. So I'm just thinking like that mobile command center on Civic Center is just asking for something like this. Like if, I don't know yeah. if it's completely wrong with yes. but like the... For the UN the mountain? Yeah, yeah, but like especially with like the ban on oversized vehicles, that's an oversized vehicle. Like I feel like it's asking for something, you know? Right. Okay. It's well, it's funny that you came up with that because I've been going around telling all my nonprofit friends Basically, it's a showpiece. They have a city convinced that they have this command center and all the cops, but mm -hmm. yet, while the cops over here eating donuts talking to me, mm -hmm. the drug dealers are over there selling the dope to right the drug users. And on this corner, right, right across the street with the car, they're shooting up and smoking it. And I'm not saying anything against drug users. What I'm saying is, the city is bamboozled. The people in the sunset think they're actually spending this money for them to do something. The cops are just saying, I mean, don't get me started. I'm getting yeah. started. <laughs> it's, it's really ugly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe something to like, that kind of sparked in me when you were showing these visuals. Uh, I didn't actually start to go maybe if we could get like, the, the hospital gowns or something and put like, shackles on our ankles or on our like, wrists. You know, maybe shackle together. I don't know, maybe it would be, would be staged, you know? Like, go further with that and stage, uh, um, stage uh, uh, people to be carted, like, dragged away to the constitution to serve. Yeah, have, like, yeah, a, 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 a big sign saying, like, maybe build a jail mm. and, like, put um, a big cage, basically, okay, and then oh, yeah, put the serve around the top 
and then have something dragged into the cell. Yeah. And, and that would be cool. We'll see that right in the plaza right there. Did you get something for Yeah, definitely. Piggybacking on that, like, uh, do that in front of City Hall. Like, that would uh, <laughs> basically... Uh, yeah, I think that's a great idea. Sorry, guys. We could actually do little miniature plays with like five or six scenarios of how someone could get the service. Mm -hmm. And the people go, wait a minute, he was just sitting there, but I'm a policeman and he's a danger to society. And, and, and oh, he, he had eight of them, he's going to jail. And then, and then people will actually see these little things yeah. of how, you know, how they do them. Also, after they get the uh, eight uh, 5150s, how there's no programs helping them. No problem. Mm. And I was thinking like, 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 you know, like, get like a piece of paper and like stick it to them with like 5150. Like they can be sitting down and we'll just put eight of them on there and then they can cart them off. Right, right. I was thinking about I could possibly come in and drag and share a powerful situation, a story, personal. Also, we might want to point out what conservatorship is now, as opposed to what they want to turn it into. Is that the same as <coughs> It's along the same line, but it's more fun.
basically like uh, people who were formerly homeless, they could have been conserved under this uh, law. So like it's sort of like that visual of like, you know, it's not necessarily people who, uh, who need conservatorship that are uh, being impacted by this. I think it would also help have people, so uh, two of the main issues are services provided and afforded, services provided, used or not used. And at least for myself, I think there's probably several other people that were in the system and or homeless or whatever <coughs> that dug their way out of it and had to use unconventional means to do it. I mean, I, I was homeless for 20 years, worked at the AIDS Foundation every day. No one ever knew I was homeless. But I was depressed, cold, and starving, and had to blackmail my way out of the sanctuary to get my SRO. And I will be glad to tell that, and then they're going to have to explain once again why I had to blackmail my way out of it. But there's tons of people that got the services that never got offered them, but through their own grit inside of them, you know, got the service. and. Why are you talking about forcing it? I, I could even get it when I was dying on the street. You know, like I said, the, the public perception is the city's doing this, this, and this. But in reality, they're doing maybe half of what, what the public perception is. So I'm not sure exactly if there is a timeline for any sort of a specific action. Um, this is a brainstorm. Um, so if there's like an actual committee or what y'all have Okay. Um, but you said there were people interviewed folks. Who did you, what, who did you interview? Um, well, Tony actually interviewed some people from this group um, last week. Yeah, we had, a, we had an iPad, and, and basically people kind of kept it to about two minutes maximum about, uh, you know, SB 1045 and why it's bad. So taking those interviews, if, if we go back to um, the last